All this week, we've been bringing you the ABC 10 weather team's newest investigation called the future of California's water. And along with more restrictions on usage, finding new resources of water is becoming a challenge. So tonight in part four of this series, meteorologist Carly Gomez and the team shows us how your flush toilet water may soon be coming to your faucet. Tens of millions of people rely on California's water, water that's also helped to feed the world. But the truth is we are all one pie chart. I mean, we all have to utilize each other. The rights for using California's water are complicated. They used rubber cement and over years, the labels have fallen off. Tracking who gets what is antiquated. The system has not been kept up to the complexities that we face in this kind of modern era. As our climate changes, what can California do about its water? We do not get to dip a straw in the ocean and just suck out what we want. And what's already being done. Water is life, right? We all need it every day. You need to keep the taps flowing no matter what. This is the future of California's water in ABC 10 Weather Investigation. From flush to your faucet. Drinking recycled wastewater could be an answer to California's water crisis. I hope that they kind of pasteurize it and filter it a lot. I mean, it's a little tough to think about. The idea may disgust most people, but environmental protection advocates and water engineers say it's something we all need to get over. The misconception is that somehow it's tainted and that the environment somehow cleans water. Actually, when we put water into the environment, we have to reclean it when we take it back out because of the potential for contamination. As our climate changes, extreme heat and droughts have become more common than floods in California. Since the year 2000, there have been at least 14 years of severe to exceptional drought conditions in the Golden State. Rupam Sony with the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California says we all need to adapt and recycle the water we already have. We really want to make sure we're planning for a climate resilient future, one where we don't have to exclusively depend on weather. It's why she's helping test direct potable reuse water or recycled water that will eventually flow from flush to treatment facilities straight to your tap. This is cleaned water from the LA County Sanitation District's AK Warren facility. Um, so you can see when you look at it, like it looks clean, but there's definitely an opportunity to clean it more. We toured the Pure Water Southern California Innovation Center. The testing done here will help the Los Angeles Metropolitan Water District become the first in the world to recycle wastewater for home use. The water goes through a three-step cleaning process. The first step is to push the water through a membrane bioreactor. The water comes in inside these tanks are just billions and billions of microorganisms. What the microorganisms do is they feed on the remaining waste. Water then moves through membrane tanks where thousands of fibers filter out microorganisms down to as small as one one hundredth of a grain of sand. And we push that water in through these different membrane layers. Um, we apply a really high pressure, about 180 pounds per square inch. It's like the equivalent of carrying an elephant on the palm of your hand. So that, that much pressure and it really squeezes that water through. Our third and final step is right here, ultraviolet light and advanced oxidation. UV light is a great disinfectant. If there happen to be any viruses um, or bacteria remaining in the water, the UV light would destroy that. An oxidant like sodium hypochlorite, commonly known as bleach, or a hydrogen peroxide is then added. Darren Polemus with the State Water Control Board says as the technology develops, the water is almost becoming too clean. Have you tried it yourself? I have. I have drinking. What does it taste like? It tastes exactly like the water you would expect to taste coming out of your tap now. There is no difference. They eliminate so much, they have to put minerals back into the water to make it drinkable. Southern Californians could be regularly drinking this water as soon as 2032. The state has always been adapting to a water crisis. The first major drought on record in California, the seven year drought from 1928 to 1934, caused the state to start building major reservoir operations and water projects. Over time, more water has been pumped out of the ground to help meet the demands of a growing population and need for food. 
As Southern California adapts to an ever changing water crisis, efforts are underway in the Sacramento and San Joaquin valleys to recycle and replenish underground water for crops that feed millions of Californians. We need to build additional infrastructure to send our water to those properties south of Elk Grove. That includes a pump station, uh, a number of pipeline projects that uh, will be constructed kind of concurrently and then improvements on the growers' property themselves to help control delivery um, of the water to their properties. Mike Crooks with the Sacramento Area Sewer District says this project, the Harvest Water Project, first stemmed from new state regulations to keep area waterways and the Delta clean. They gave us an updated permit that contained much more stringent requirements for ammonia and nitrogen removal. They use what's called indirect potable reuse water. It's the most common type of recycled water. It's cleaned, stored underground first, and heads out before use. Recycled water has been around for three, four decades easily in a very uh, extended use. It's grown over the years. It started as just using it for irrigation. For the Sacramento Area Sewer District, they can share this cleaner water with the farming community. Our approach is basically to send our water to them for them to use uh, to irrigate their crops instead of pumping groundwater. We may not be able to slow the rate of climate change, but lawmakers, engineers, and environmental advocates say we can change how we adapt. We spend a lot of time and energy and money moving water to our cities, both San Francisco, LA, all the big cities import water. That water gets taken there now, used once, and then disposed of. Why not use it again? Water is life, right? We all need it every day, day in and day out. It's something we can't run out of. And so we need to keep the taps flowing no matter what. All right, and Carly joins us right now. Now, I gotta say, there are a lot of people who are against this just because of where the water comes from. Yeah. But what would you say to those people who are, you know, kind of questioning mm -hmm. recycled wastewater and the safety? Right. And when I first started the story, I thought the same thing. I said, I don't know how many people are going to be on board with drinking that kind of water. But it's not just the toilets. It's mm -hmm. sewage water. It's runoff water from all the storms we've had that go into the ocean. And when you get that water, you know, you think of the wildlife out there. You think of animals defecating into the rivers, the creeks, the streams. That makes its way downstream all the way into our own rivers. And, you know, it's a natural process of cleaning. But this is at least much more cleaner in the sense that we actually get it out of nature and we're actually starting to put it through all of these different processes, membrane process, UV filter, all of that. So... It's a little cleaner. Yes, <laughs> than what people might think, yes. Right. All right, now if you missed parts one through three, don't forget that you can go to abc10.com to watch our full weather investigation called The Future of California's Water. It's on our website right now if you want to check it out.